Welcome to the beautiful Wallings Nature Reserve and to the Department of the Environment Conservation Series. I'm Patrice Martin. Now in this four-part series, we will be exploring environmental trends here in Antigua and Barbuda. We'll be featuring topics such as biodiversity, climate change, sustainable land management, data management, and how they impact our lives. You will also meet the people behind the scenes who are committed to ensuring that we meet and sustain our global environmental priorities. You will also see Antigua and Barbuda like you have never seen it before. Stay with us. Fearing the destruction from the next storm or hurricane, we abandon our home and businesses because they are in low-lying areas. Our fishermen's nets and pots go empty for days and weeks. The fish we need to feed ourselves are dying or left due to loss of habitat. Constant droughts have left our ponds and reservoirs dry, leading to water shortages threatening our health and our food supply. We've already begun to take steps so together we can make a difference and create a sustainable nation for future generations. Planting a tree, reducing your driving by using public transportation, carpooling or switching to an electric car, using energy efficient bulbs and appliances are all things you could do to make a difference in limiting climate change. Remember, there's no planet B. Welcome back. Biodiversity can sound like a buzzword at times because it is used so often. But what does it mean? Let's put it this way. It's a variety of life. Let's take a closer look at biodiversity in our environment. So the Convention of Biological Diversity, it was started in 1992. Antigua ratified it in 1993. The convention has three main objectives conservation of biodiversity, sustainable use, and fair and equitable sharing of genetic resources. It's important that we work together, that there is a collaboration between the conventions so that we can move forward so that the environment is safe and healthy for future generations. Because as you can see with climate change, we have had so much loss. There is an IPBES report that says if we continue behaving business as usual, behaving in the way we've been doing, we will lose a million species. So now is the time to have transformative change. This year is actually a super year for biodiversity, where we are looking towards our 2050 vision of living in harmony with nature. Because the idea behind that is that we can work together with nature to provide solutions. We can do this via education. We can do this via working with our fellow agencies to make sure the importance of biodiversity is mainstreamed into a variety of sectors, such as the health sector. And that's an important topic now because we're hearing about the pandemic with COVID-19 and the intrusion of us moving into the habitats of other animals where a disease can hop from an animal to a human and causing an issue. We have to consider mainstreaming of biodiversity into tourism because having a robust ecosystem means that we can be more aesthetically pleasing. We can provide a beautiful island that has white sand, blue water beaches that the tourists seem to like, and we as and residents also enjoy. But also, 
Department of Environment it has to help regulate and help work with other agencies and collaborate with them so that we do our best so that biodiversity is conserved, biodiversity is sustained and reused, and biodiversity is shared equitably. Antigua and Barbuda, we are small island developing states and we depend on biodiversity for our survival. Ecosystems consist of a variety of biodiversity. Like if you consider the ecosystem of a pond with all the plants that exist within it, with all the microorganisms, with all the fish, with all the tadpoles that survive in it. If you have robust biodiversity within an ecosystem, that ecosystem is able to provide the services that we depend on. For example, the services a pond will provide with the filtration of water through it as it moves through the land and eventually getting into sea. That filtration is important for us as a water source and also to make sure that it, it helps to make sure the water ending up in the seas are, are clearer and cleaner. We have many different types of ecosystems, mangroves and coral reef ecosystems. And in small island developing states, we depend on the services provided by these ecosystems for our survival. For instance, mangroves and coral reef systems help reduce the impact of storm surge when we get from hurricanes and various other kinds of storms and help reduce the destruction of our coast and intrusion of water into our land and therefore I always say not even only in the Antigua and Barbuda context but in the context of small island developing states we are very vulnerable to the impacts of biodiversity loss. That's why we have to work towards ensuring that we have robust biodiversity in all of our ecosystems so that we can be sure our ecosystems are strong and be able to provide the services that we depend on for food, for clean water, for shelter, for protection from storm surge. We work with DCA because they help with the sustainable development, with, with planning. We work with the Ministry of Agriculture because they're one of the main um, agencies that manages our natural resources and they, they deal with biodiversity all the time. This is their main program. We work with Ministry of Health and we are part of the Ministry of Health itself. We work with Ministry of Education. We are developing um, these curricula for biodiversity, for climate change, for the convention, so that people understand the importance of biodiversity loss, understand how climate change is affecting, and how understand how, as an individual, you can make an impact. I think in the past, it's more that it's the government's job to do this, it's this person's job to do this, but no, no, it's our business. Everybody has a part to play. So there are a variety of agencies. I haven't mentioned all, because we also work with the Met Office, we work with NODS, we work with all the agencies and we actually have a technical advisory committee consisting of these agencies and also consisting of environmental NGOs such as the EAG, such as GARD. We work with a variety of NGOs and community groups that it's important to work with because everybody, as you said, have a part to play in this process. It's my desire, my passion, that I, I want to work more with the community groups, work more with them and get them active out there because they're already doing things that they may not even know that, that that's in tune with reversing our biodiversity loss. And it's just to emphasize and show that they are, uh, they are contributing and they can do so much more because I think once individuals have ownership and know that they play a part in this important work, that we can be more successful and we can, be, we can actually get to the point where we're successful in conserving biodiversity and using it sustainably. Wallings has been in existence from since 1890. So the Wallings Nature Reserve team is trying to protect one of the last remaining rainforests in Antigua and Barbuda. So the purpose of the reserve and the team is to ensure that the Niagara Protocol is protected, 
because we have rare species of trees, the soldier crab, we're trying to repopulate that and we don't want persons destroying the rainforest. So with us being administrators, we're protecting our last remaining rainforest by ensuring that rules and guidelines are followed. gonna put them into that the barbecue pit for if you are having a barbecue with your family we have a hung trail flag so we don't have an issue of persons getting lost anymore we have persons from the reserve team on a daily basis going onto the trails checking to see that we have no trash because anything from the Wallings nature reserve goes right into the sea to do when it comes back and it's in season. We're gonna tie a tampolin to catch the food, bring it down slowly, take it out, and then we've lost rare species of trees so I remember coming in here as a child I used to have eat mangoes from a specific tree that used to taste like bread. And because of persons just cutting down all lighting, wildfires, we've lost quite a few. And then with the invasive lemongrass species we've had forest fires but I can say that from since the reserve took over in 2018 we haven't had any forest fires because what we've been doing we've been cutting the grass with our hand to ensure that there's always a clear path for persons to go through so we've been doing educational pointers as to why not to litter why not to cut down the trees why not to light fires so that we can continue to protect what remains of the biodiversity We need more governance, we need more persons on the scene ensuring that the rules and guidelines are followed. We need persons to volunteer so you understand what it takes to get the work that is being done, done. And we need persons to just come and enjoy nature. If you don't know, ask questions. No question is a stupid question. It might just push an idea that you want to see enforced and uh, education and, and assisting even in your own community, can assist. What do we have here? Oh, we have uh, some mahogany for wild. Um, which is um, important um, for a lot of reasons, um, mainly for um, reduce carbon in the atmosphere, also help with the um, importance of pests and, and diseases. We use trees to promote biodiversity in our, our annual plant fair where we distribute over 8,000 trees in one day. We also have different projects that we work with to help reforestation. So we plant over 1,000 trees in all in one day on different locations in Antigua Barbera that help with biodiversity. All our plants come from seed. All of, we germinate all, all our plants from seed, mainly because we want to identify the correct species and then we can monitor how long it takes them from germination to up to um, big enough so we can manage the outside world. The Department of Environment is proud to announce that it has successfully presented Antigua and Barbuda's sixth national report to the Secretariat for the Convention on Biological Diversity. As a signatory to the Convention on Biological Diversity, Antigua and Barbuda is required to submit national reports on our progress in the implementation of the objectives within the Convention. The most recent report outlines our progress in meeting the set national biodiversity targets which are based on the Global Aichi targets. These are a set of 20 global targets under the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity 2011 to 2020. The sixth national report shows that we are making excellent headway in achieving these targets with 19 of 20 targets on track to be achieved by our set deadline. While we are pleased to have made great headway as detailed in the sixth national report, we will continue to improve our approach to biodiversity 
and commit to working with our stakeholders and the public to sustainably manage our biodiversity resources. The Department of Environment wishes to thank you for taking an interest in Antigua and Barbuda's progress and will continue to keep you informed. Remember, it is our responsibility to preserve our island's biodiversity today for the generations of tomorrow. Department of the Environment's Conservation Series. I'm Patrice Martin, and with me on my far right, Rafika Atwood, Executive Director of the Wallings Nature Reserve. Janiel <laughs> Simon, Nursery Manager, the Department of Environment. And Helena Jeffrey Brown, Technical Coordinator, Department of Environment. Thank you all for agreeing to being here with us today. But before we turn to the audience, I have one question for all of you. Why did you decide to work in the field that you are in now? We'll start with you, Rafika. Wallings needed saving and my village needed a champion. And Janine? Um, I have a natural love for plants. Um, my dad, he's a hard specialist. My mom, oh, my grandma, she, is on, she owned a farm, so it was quite easy for me. And Helena? And I would always say that biodiversity has always been a passion. I started out as a veterinarian, and so it was easy to transition into this field. Okay. I see we have a question in the audience. So, how can Antiguans and Barbudans improve biodiversity right here? Volunteering. There's so much you can learn by becoming a volunteer. Also, we have our own plant nursery. You can always come by the department and um, get plants so you can have different sheep plants and exercise. Also, I just want to emphasize the importance of having interaction with the entire population of Antigua Barbuda and Department of Environment and all those agencies that manage natural resources, such as the Ministry of Agriculture. Because there's so many initiatives there. I know Ministry of Agriculture has its um, seedling initiative where they're working with many of our backyard farmers so they can grow their own food and they can make a difference. I know that Janiel just spoke about his, the, the plant nursery where we work with so many schools and community groups to plant, to make sure we are, our plants are out there working. We have our, all our NGOs that you can um, volunteer with to help work on our offshore islands to help conserve our biodiversity both flora and fauna there's so many avenues but i think i want to highlight and i thank you the audience for that question because it's important that everybody knows that you have a role to play in protecting and conserving and in sustainably using biodiversity it really makes a difference in how we move forward as antigua and barbuda hi how can we balance biodiversity and tourism development uh, in Antigua and Barbuda, especially as a small island with a limited landmass? Thank you for that question. I think that with our protected areas and our natural reserves, such as the Walling Nature Reserve, we showcase our biodiversity and put it in a package that's, that, that's, um, that's, that, that's attractive to, not, to tourists, to our tourism industry, and to also our residents. And the idea behind that is to educate, to show the people the importance of the, the biodiversity. But it also brings funding that helps to maintain our natural reserves and our um, protected areas. And that's so important to the small island developing states. We don't have that many with natural resources such as minerals and, and, and such like other countries have. But we have our beautiful beaches and we have our beautiful biodiversity, which we showcase strongly in our protected areas and such as the work Rafika is doing in the, in the Wallens Nature Reserve, where tourists flock here, where our residents love to walk through and hike, and she can use that, the funding there to make sure that it, they, they use, it is used sustainably and, it, and is around for future generations. Sustainable development as what is happening at Wallings. Our tagline, the beach is just the beginning. However, there's more to discover, so you can discover Wallings. 
You can learn how to make soap, learn how to use a lemongrass, learn how to make candle, identify birds, identify trees. Come and paint your name on a bench. Do something that contributes to say that I did that. So you can tell your children or your friend or your family, I contributed to that. We're planting flowers, we're doing beautification. Come get your hands dirty so that you can then say, especially if you're a hotel worker, I remember planting that tree. And then with the nursery team at the Department of Environment, if we are not, if we don't have enough, or if we're having a planting drive, we can always get the plant from them and make it collaborative effort between schools, other communities, persons that just want to get their hands dirty, persons that want to enjoy nature, especially in the light of COVID-19, where persons are now going back to their roots and getting their feet dirty. Hey, I can throw in Max in the equation. Max is my donkey. So we can all explore nature. Also, we formulate over 10,000 plants a year in the department. Also, we're working with the schools to build nurseries so they can propagate more plants. We have our tree plant initiative that we want to plant over 90,000 um, trees in one year. So the hotels, the um, travel airline, the travel agencies also can come and sign up for our tree planting initiative. A question to the panel. How is the Convention on Biological Diversity relevant to us here in Antigua and Barbuda? Okay, so first of all, we just need to know that by we are party to the Convention on Biological Diversity, that means we have our legal obligations to it. And it's extremely relevant because if we look at the objectives of the Convention, it's there are mainly three. We look at the uh, conservation of biodiversity, which we're doing quite a bit of. EAG is working conservation of the Antigua racer snake, and then there's the Jumbi Bay Hawksville conservation program. We look, the second objective is looking at sustainable use of biodiversity. That's taking place all the time through our Ministry of Agriculture's use and management of natural resources through um, agents like Rafik and her team who are managing Wallens Nature Reserve. And then the third one is the share, fair and equitable sharing of genetic resources. So we are the, the work that we do in biodiversity, the work that Rafika does, the work that EAG does, the work that the other NGOs in the environment, the field um, work, as well as Ministry of Agriculture and so many other agencies are directly related to the objective of the convention. So I would like Rafika to speak a bit more about the work that she does in the Wallens Nature Reserve because what she does here is one of the hallmarks of what the convention is trying to do at this point, which is to encourage the, the, the community groups, the individuals, the people to know that, that they have a role to play in conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. Wallings Nature Reserve is protected by the Niagara Protocol, so we work very closely with the Department of Environment. If we need questions and answers on birds, we contact the EAG. We work along with the Ministry of Tourism, we work along with the Ministry of Agriculture. Community in this sense is one person's idea combining others with like ideas so that we can strengthen what is already there so we have something that's tangible. For instance, we wanted to, we're going to repair the reservoir eventually. Someone might have a better idea as to how to get it done quicker and better. Because at the end of the day, 13 million gallons of water can help the island of Antigua Barbuda with drought. We used to supply 30 um, water tanks back then. We're having water issues now. Why? When an area that rains every single day. So, our greeting, welcome to Wallings Nature Reserve. How may we add some sunshine to your day? Expect unexpected bursts of rain. And we want persons to understand that what is happening at Wallings is for the protection of the biological diversity of Antigua and Barbuda because we need to protect it now for future generations. Um, we also have different programs within the department. We have the Iwico project and the spear project that we plant thousands of trees to help reforestation that can help attract rainfall and also help um, protect our our um, natural resources, help to prevent from drought, um, also help prevent from flood and help with our um, storm during hurricane season. Thank you all for participating in today's discussion. I know I learned a lot as well, and I hope that you did. Thank you to our panel, Rafika Atwood, Helena Jeffrey Brown, and Janelle Simon. Join us next time for another episode of the Conservation Series presented by the Department of Environment. I'm Patrice Martin. See you next time. <laughs>